So I often get the question on what's the difference between physical material and appearance inside a fusion? And is there one better than the other? Well, let's take a look and learn about both of them. So like I mentioned in the intro, a question I see quite often uh, is what's the difference between physical material and appearance? And which one should I be using? Uh, and so that's what I wanted to kind of clarify uh, in this video. So you can see on the screen I have two cubes and they're both exactly the same size. They're both two by two by two inches. Um, now, if I do the properties of block one, so I'm gonna right click on block one and come to properties, you'll notice that it says the material name is steel. So that's the physical material. That's what this block is actually made out of. And we can see that the mass is 36 ounce mass. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing with this other block. And we can see that it is also made out of steel and it's the exact same weight, 36.3 ounce mass. So what's the difference here? Well, they're both the same physical material, but the one on the right has an appearance added to it. So for example, you know, green plastic. And we can even see that, for example, if I came in here and did a chamfer or whatever, you can kind of see the underlying material is the steel and it's almost like we just painted the outside of this steel block with green paint as an appearance. So should we use physical material or should we use appearance? My opinion is to try and set everything as physical material. And the reason for that is the exact reason I just showed is you can measure with this properties. So if I right click and say properties, we'll notice it's gonna be smaller now because of you know the chamfer removed some of the material. And so now instead of 36, it's 34. Here's, here's another example. I have this wooden podium that I designed and I wanna know how much this thing's gonna weigh when it's totally finished and you know manufactured and I wanna pick it up and move it around. Well, if I right click on the top level and go to properties, we can see that the physical material is white oak. And I'll show you how I added white oak you know, as the material here. And it tells me that it's uh, about 200 ounce mass, which is about 13 pounds. So, so this podium, when fully assembled, is about 13 pounds. And that really helps me because it's like, is that you know, heavy or too heavy for somebody to kind of easily lift and move around? Uh, or could I make it even you know, beefier, make the legs a little bit wider or something like that? And, and I could see I want to keep it under 15 pounds, for example, and I could keep coming in here, making changes, and then uh, right mouse clicking and going to my properties and finding out what the total weight of the whole assembly is. So how do you go about adding the uh, physical material and or the appearance? So under the modify menu, you'll see the two options. So physical material and appearance. So I'm gonna go to physical material and it kind of looks like the appearance menu. So you can see it's broken down into like, you know, ceramics and flooring and glass, liquid metals, stone, plastics, wood, etc. So let's just say this is made out of wood. I could come in here and pick which one of these I want. And you'll notice a lot of these are kind of, you know, they don't have uh, an actual material, uh, an appearance, I should say, attached to them. Some of them do, but a lot of them don't. And again, we're basically putting the, the mass properties into the design. So for example, let's just say this is made out of maple. So I'm just gonna drag maple onto that block and this is now made out of maple. And I'll do the same thing over here. I'll drag maple onto that block. And if I right click on block one and we go into the properties, we'll see that the material is now maple and you'll notice that the mass is significantly less because it's not a big chunk of steel anymore. It is, you know, lighter wood. So it's only a three ounce mass. Okay. 
Then for the appearance, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pick on appearance. And we can see kind of the similar um, thing where we have the different uh, appearances, concrete, fabric, etc. So I could come in here and, you know, again, this is made out of maple, right? But we could add any kind of appearance to that. So uh, I could come into wood solid and let's do, you know, painted, for example. Um, and let's do one of these painted maples. So I'll just go ahead and select this one here and drag that onto that design. And it's now um, painted maple. So we can kind of see how it gives that appearance there. And if we were to click on this and do the properties, we can see that the material name is maple. And once again, it's, it's about three ounce mass. I could also hit A for appearance. And even though it's made out of maple, let's put some kind of a, um, or a paint or something like that. Let's just do like a glossy blue paint onto it. So I'm gonna drag that onto there, hit close, and it now looks blue. But if I right mouse click and go to the properties, it's still made out of maple. You'll notice the, the mass has not changed. We've just changed, like we spray painted it blue. So it's still made out of maple wood, but we've spray painted it blue, for example. So my point here is I would set things with the physical material so you get your mass properties correct and then if you want to change the appearance of what it looks like you can change the appearance of that physical material object now if i go into my preferences down here is material and if i click on that you'll notice that has default materials and appearances. So whenever I start a new design, it's gonna create a metal, it's gonna make the component a metal steel object. And I could come in here and say, you know what, I want it to be made out of aluminum instead. So I could pick any of these categories here and then pick whichever material underneath that category that I want. You'll also notice that I can specify a physical material and then apply a different uh, appearance for that. So for example, this is metal aluminum. I could click on this and maybe I want the uh, material to be kind of like, you know, cast steel or something like that. That's what I want the appearance to look like. So if I go ahead and do that and hit apply and say, okay, when I create a new design now, let's go ahead and just, I'll just do a quick box here. I'll do a two by two by two. You'll notice the appearance has that galvanized metal look to it. But if I were to um, take a look at the properties, we can see that the physical material is aluminum because that's what I specified in my preferences. Also, you have the ability to add your own physical materials if you want to. So if you go under the Utilities tab, and under Utility, there's Manage Materials. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, and here is the Material Browser. So for example, I'll go into Metal, and here's aluminum. And you'll notice on all of these, there's like a little lock symbol next to it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select aluminum, and then I can add this to my favorites. So you'll notice if I hover over that icon, it says adds material to favorites. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And now it's in my, my favorites area, and it'll allow me to edit this. So we can't edit the default one that's um, part of the Fusion library. We're basically duplicating this and making it our own. And so what's nice about this is maybe you use a particular type of aluminum and you want it to look a certain way. Uh, so you could come in here and I'm just gonna give this a name. I'll call this aluminum uh, demo <laughs> or something like that. I can give it keywords or comments, manufacturers, etc. 
But then if I click on this Appearance tab, and you can see here that you can change um, the color of the material, the roughness of the material, um, you know, if you want to add like a bump pattern to it or whatever, you can kind of change what the material looks like. And then if I click on this physical tab, this is where you can set up all of the information about it and like the thermal, mechanical, and strength of the material. So if you know like the Young's modulus, the shear modulus, the density, etc. for the material, you can add that in here and make your own custom material. And then once that's completed, you could set that as your default material uh, that Fusion uses when you create new bodies and components. I hope you found that video useful. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe and share it with others. And as always, have fun learning Fusion, and see you next time.